Hey everybody, welcome to Monday. I don't know about where you are, it's freezing here. So I I am huddled up because you can feel it coming in the windows, man. It's cold. Uh, that has nothing to do with the video today, but kind of does. Kind of does. Um, because this is the time of year that tends to be slow for gaming news. And so this is the type of year where there's always some OMG games are bad piece that comes out. But this year, silence, crickets, none of that ish. And I have a theory as to why. If you like this sort of stuff, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Okay, so we're going to take a step back right now. I'm going to show you two articles about the same university. It's the University of Prince Edward Island, also known as UPEI. Um, and there was a story uh, in November that dealt with uh, mental health stresses during COVID-19 at the school. Now, Prince Edward Island is not getting walloped by COVID. Their, their case counts are very, very low compared to places like Ontario, Quebec, Alberta, you know, in Canada, BC. Um, but even then, they found back in November, here we go, ta-da! Um, academic financial and emotional challenges cited by respondents to voluntary survey. What they found is that two thirds, right? Nearly two thirds of students who replied to a voluntary survey reported struggling more with mental health issues and 11% said they had thoughts related to suicide. Now, okay, got to do caveats on studies like this. Um, people who are affected by certain things tend to fill in voluntary surveys more so this can be a bit of a skewed perspective but still two-thirds that's really freaking high uh, so it, it you know i pricked my ears up at this story that came out this weekend upei student union offers video game service a safe entertainment alternative what does that mean? You'll see here. It will encourage students who might not feel comfortable kind of going outside. What this school has done is they're offering um, consoles free to rent. I guess games come with it as well. Um, it requires a $20 refundable deposit, but you can rent consoles for free. You get your money back when you return the console. Um... So they had what basically happened was um, a student union vice president came up with this initiative because money was left over in the budget because all the major events were canceled due to COVID-19. So, uh, oh, it says four different types of consoles with up to 40 preloaded games. Free to rent but require a $20 refundable deposit. So this university in PEI has basically become like what Blockbuster Video was when I was a teenager. You know, if you couldn't afford a console, you could rent it for a weekend. They had to pay for it there, it wasn't free. But still, same idea. And it struck me how much in a year the, not, not you know, the stuff from the screamers within gaming, and yet even then, Things have been much quieter from the usual suspects regarding um, sexisms, you know, in games and violence in games. It's been it's been quiet. And certainly the mainstream media has not been taking the same swings. Now, the mainstream media has been um, distracted of late. The you know, the big, bad, evil they're coming to take us away are, are now um, uh, our Wall Street bets. <laughs> users but even then there there doesn't seem to be there doesn't seem to be the same negativity surrounding a bunch of people actually spending real money and affecting the real stock market as there was surrounding people who played fake shooting in digital worlds right it's very strange that people seem less bent out of shape for something that actually is impacting the real world in meaningful ways than they were about something that study after study after study shows doesn't impact the real world in any way at all other than maybe giving some people a mental health lifeline. What I found interesting about this story from UPEI is this is, this is university students 
acknowledging they are they're actually taking action based on it being a meaningful mental health uh, um, lifeline. And that's not nothing, right? If, if, you know, they've decided that this is actually going to help people who are going through mental health struggles, no surprise to me. I've been writing about this and speaking about this, that, that the net effects of video games are positive, not just neutral. Net effects are positive. Um, it doesn't surprise me. It does surprise me how utterly, totally, and completely the attitudes have changed due to COVID-19. Not because of the virus itself, because of the massive changes in our lifestyles that people have experienced because of COVID-19. The, the not being able to go outside, not being able to gather. Well, you can go outside, right? But I, I shouldn't speak to, I'm very careful about saying you can go outside. Because me, you know, I, I live in trees. Um, I don't literally live in a tree, but you know what I mean? Um, I step outside and I am significantly far away from my neighbors. That's not the same as somebody who lives in a downtown Toronto condo with these narrow little hallways, you know, and, and, and you can't stay six feet of difference if you distance if you pass someone in the hall, right? So going out even for a walk is much more fraught um, than, than somebody where I am with lots of space, um, you know, uh, me walking to the end of my driveway and back is, is <laughs> it's like a city block. Uh, my driveway is quite long. Um, but yeah, so people who don't want to catch COVID, you know, they're playing video games. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, video games went from this big, bad, evil thing that other people do to this awesome, great, cool thing that we do, that, you know, people we know do. I mean, hey, I've always known people who are gamers. I am a gamer, but you know what I mean? The royal we, the sort of proverbial we. And it, I saw a thing, it was an Instagram or something like that, that there was a joke that somebody said we all went from like, you know, trading term, uh, turnips on Animal Crossing to, you know, the GameStop thing in a year and I chuckled and then, you know, maybe, no, correlation is not causation. That's a joke. Um, but it, it is sort of a joke with, uh, uh, you know, a kernel of truth in it. Mainstream opinions about video games have changed notably. And now the question is, are they going to stay that way? Are people finally going to recognize, except for the lunatics that will never let it go, but are they finally going to recognize that, it, it, you know, games don't turn people into serial killers. They don't, uh, uh, you know, horribly damage social skills. You know, none of that boss fight episode three, right? Um, is this going to hold? Or once things get back to normal, pr normal-ish, probably around this fall or at least by, you know, next winter, are people going to develop collective amnesia and start bashing video games again? I'm not sure. I am leaning towards saying, no, this is a permanent change. Some people may get more vocal again. Some of the more hot take pieces might pop up again. But I think that the, the people who won't let it go are going to focus more on bad behavior of individual developers or, you know, trying to create industry boogeymen that, oh no, ga games might not be bad for women, but the gaming industry is bad for women. It's a terrible place to work. You know, on a case-by-case -case basis, some workplaces, that may very well be true. I, I can see you're even seeing the shift towards that, right? Like, oh, another article on CD Projekt Red's Crunch Culture came out. Strangely, not the same for The Last of Us 2, but that's a discussion for another day. Uh, you, you are seeing more of the focus. Oh, Ubisoft had issues in the summer. Let's keep kicking them for that. 
you know, you seeing more and more and more of that because they just can't get the traction beating up on the games themselves that they once did. And I find that public opinion is kind of like social programs. Uh, you know how like Obamacare was really unpopular until people actually got Obamacare and then Ob Obamacare shot up in popularity because a lot of people are like, hey, I have health insurance now, you know? Um, I think public opinion works that way too, right? The fact that we're having a whole bunch of fights over transgender people is in part because the average person now is totally cool with gay people. You know, gay people, lesbian people, bisexual people, whatever. I still think there's a lot of bi erasure out there, but you know what I mean. When I think back to the mid-1990s when I started doing... Um, LGBTQ plus act, uh, activism. We didn't call it LGBTQ plus back then. Uh, but when I started doing it, it, it was not the norm. It was a minority opinion that it, being gay is cool and gay marriage is actually good for society. Like same sex marriage is, is actually beneficial because it, it brings in more couples from the margins of society, right? It's, it's actually a, a, beneficial social force that that was the minority opinion when I started this stuff in like 94 93 94 somewhere around there um and so to see it change and we we haven't seen we haven't seen a backlash the same way I mean attitudes towards um you know, policing are changing and, and th there can be a temporary backlash. But for the most part, once something is normalized, it's normalized. It doesn't go back. And we might actually be hitting this point after, God, almost nine years, nine years of people this wave, right? Because what else was going on 93, 94? the last video game moral panic over doom and mortal Kombat, right so this this is a very this is the end of a very long road for liana here right in my lifetime i have spent most of my lifetime battling the claims that video games are bad for you and yes there will be some people who are but some still are but we're not gonna hear that talk from joe biden this time around that we did from him when he was Obama's vice president, Boss Fight Episode 3, again, if you want those quotes. Because now, I think if the, those very... Remember I said in Boss Fight Episode 3 where you have to get the soccer moms, you have to get the suburban moms, the suburban dads on board to change attitudes about gaming, to stop politicians from saying stupid things. Right now, suburban moms and suburban dads who are working from home and have their kids at home love video games. They create quiet. They create harmony. If some politician starts, you know, bashing video games right now as somehow bad, uh, there's going to be, uh, th you know, th there's going to be a riot in suburbia, USA, because parents have dropped a lot of their objections to too much screen time even though we really don't know you know except for babies how much screen time is too much obviously individual results may vary and as much as it's it, the the reasons are terrible it's nice to be at the threshold of this point that we don't have to defend games anymore not the same way we, we are going to have to um, still back off the censorious instinct of, well, now games are mainstream, so we have to keep, you know, the moral purity, the, the mental hygiene going. But th this, is a new, this is a new era for games. We, we have finally beaten this idea that there's something inherently bad about the medium of video games, which is great. Uh, what we have to watch for now 
is to not fall into the trap that other media have that now that we can do it, let's just go crazy about doing it, right? Like, let's be better, let's be smarter, let's be more conscious than, than TV and film have been historically. Let's take our, because um, cause this is to video games the way the 1960s, 1970s were for, for film, right? The, the movement into new Hollywood cinema, a more thoughtful period for freshly college educated young adults. That, that's, you know, that's where Hollywood was at, at the time you know, instead of doing stupid things with that or or doing excessive things with that, um, prioritizing one group of people and shutting out everybody else, let's not do what Hollywood did in that regard. Let's learn from history and do it better in games because we have a real opportunity to bring like everybody along for the ride with this, right? So I'll leave it there. This didn't require um, that much time. It's, I'm just, you know, planting a flag. I'm, I'm putting a marker in this point in history. Uh, so if you like this sort of content, if you like this sort of analysis, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Quick boss fight update. One, I have found a volunteer to do the captioning on boss fight episode three. Yay. I, this person is one of my favorite people in the world right now for purely selfish reasons. Um, there were some issues with repairmen in my house this week that threw off my recording scheduling, as did COVID. Uh, the COVID hair is real. Oh my God, this may not look bad to you guys, but it's driving me freaking crazy. Um, but um, a finish to a remodel that started in December 2019, I did not misspeak there, 2019, uh, is ongoing. They were supposed to come last Monday, and then they were supposed to come Saturday, and then they were supposed to come Sunday. And right now, as I'm recording this, I'm still not sure they're showing up. So I was going to record Sunday because I thought they were coming Saturday, and then... So I am doing my best. I will keep you posted. Uh, but that's great about the captioning. That's very exciting. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching.